in uh, Colorado, uh, Congressman Jason Crow joining you uh, this afternoon for the next installment of our virtual job training webinar series. Uh, as many of you know who have joined us with, uh, from prior uh, training sessions over the last few weeks, we're doing things a little bit differently this year. Uh, last year, we held the first ever Congressional District 6 uh, job fair. Uh, we actually had over a thousand job seekers and over 60 employers all come together under one roof uh, to uh, interview folks, uh, give them new jobs and help take, them, uh, take their careers and their families to the next level. Uh, it was a great success and we were planning to do it again this year. But as we all know, unfortunately, the pandemic is preventing us from doing it the same way. But we wanted to provide that same service uh, to the um, uh, CD6 community. Uh, and we wanted to try to make sure we're meeting the, the great need that our community faces now as thousands of people find themselves uh, laid off or furloughed uh, and unemployed uh, during this economic and health crisis. So we put together this virtual series to help job seekers get the trainings that they need to transition to new careers or to seek jobs within the same industry uh, and also help connect uh, with job uh, employers uh, with job seekers as well. So I'm really excited about tonight's uh, training. We have Lauren Brown joining us uh, this evening from the Mikasa Resource Center and Lauren's going to be providing a really important training about professional email uh, because we find ourselves communicating more and more virtually whether that's over Zoom or FaceTime or email. And you know that first impression that you make, uh, that first encounter with somebody is oftentimes over email. So what do you need to know? How do you need to communicate to go to that next step in the job interview process? And we're really excited. But before I kick it over to Lauren to uh, get to the training that uh, is gonna be so valuable tonight, I wanted to say a quick word about uh, what we're doing in Washington to address the economic stimulus right now. So last Friday, the unemployment insurance program expired uh, and uh, millions of Americans who rely on this program to pay their rent, uh, their mortgage, utility bills, or to buy food now don't have it. Uh, so we are working really hard to try to get that uh, expanded and continued uh, in some form. Uh, so we actually, uh, about two months ago, over two months ago now, the House passed the HEROES Act that had an extension of that program and so many other really important programs from uh, PPP loans to additional support for businesses to additional support for cities and counties to expanded testing uh, to vote by mail to all sorts of things that we need to get ourselves through the economic and health crisis. We passed that bill over two months ago. Now it's time for the Senate to pass their bill so that we can negotiate a compromise that's good for the country and moves us forward and protects uh, the people of our community. So we're putting pressure on the Senate to act they have to pass a bill, they have to pass it quick because we need to get these benefits back to the American people. So that's what I'm here in DC working on this week. So uh, now with no further ado, uh, I'm proud to introduce Lauren Brown, who's gonna work you through uh, this next virtual training uh, so that we know uh, how to formulate emails and communicate people effectively. And I think Lauren, this is a training that everyone in Congress needs as well, uh, <laughs> because so often there are misunderstandings uh, with email communication, and it's important that you do it the right way. So thanks uh, for joining us, uh, Lauren, and thank you to all of you uh, at home for joining this next installment, and we hope to see you in the next one. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, Lauren. Um, great. I'm just going to start screen sharing here. Um, Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Representative Crow, for that introduction. Um, I'm excited to be here with all of you. Um, my name is Lauren Brown. I am the Director of Career Pathways at Mikasa Resource Center. Um, Mikasa has been serving the Denver Metro community um, since 1976. We began in uh, job training uh, for Latina women. Um, some of you maybe know us as Mikasa Resource Center for Women, uh, but we are here to serve people um, across the metro area, um, no matter their uh, race, ethnicity, income. Um, we really want to create pathways of opportunity for every single person. We specialize in career pathways and business pathways. 
um, that work is um, can be helping folks start their own small business, helping people upskill in their career. We work with young people, adults um, across the spectrum. And I think I'm particularly excited to be here today uh, to talk about writing a professional email because I think that is such an important skill for all of us, whether we're currently working uh, or whether we're job seeking. Um, so just wanted to do a couple of housekeeping reminders uh, during the webinar. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, so down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. Um, we will have time for Q&A at the end, so feel free to put your chat, uh, your Q&A in there and we can uh, answer your questions at the end. Um, and make sure your computer volume is turned up so you can hear me. Um, I also will be sharing Mikasa Resource Center's contact information today at the end of the webinar and we would absolutely love to be in touch with you. Um, we are busy and active during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, figuring out how to offer our services online. Uh, we do our career coaching, our business consulting, all of it is available um, online and via Zoom. So we would love to be in touch with, with each of you. Um, so our webinar agenda today, we're really gonna look at four things. How to set yourself, set yourself up for success, unlocking subject lines, that is our invitation to open and is so important to writing an email. Uh, we're going to talk about how to build the your email and then how to get out your magnifying glass and how to make sure that you pre proofread your work for success. Um, so as you think about setting yourself up for success, it's important to remember what email is. Email is a great way, it's a quick way to communicate an idea or ask a question. So as you are a job seeker and you're thinking about applying for new jobs, Email is a great way to communicate, to ask questions, to learn more. Email is also an incredibly important part of workplace success in 2020. Whether you like it or not, you need to know how to do email and uh, utilize your email in a strong and professional manner so you can be successful. I think it's also really, really important to remember what email is not. And this is where I think we can sometimes get ourselves into trouble um, when we use email for the things that it is not. Um, email is not an immediate way to get a response. Um, so I think what you don't wanna use email for is to ask someone a question that needs an immediate response. Email's never a replacement for an in-person conversation. So if you need to have a phone call or a video conference, um, of course, right now, in-person conversations are much different, um, but it is not a replacement for those things. The things that need to be communicated either face-to-face -face or via phone or via video conference, um, email shouldn't replace that. Um, and email isn't a place to communicate sensitive information or to have a difficult conversation. Um, so it's important when you think about your email to always check your purpose. Before you send an email, you need to ask yourself, is this the best way to communicate this information? Sending an email might not be the best way. Having, setting up a video conference, setting up a phone call, maybe serves your purposes better. And this is an important one. As people, we're also a little bit like babies. You need to ask yourself, are you angry? Are you tired? Are you hungry? Are there things getting in the way of you sending a professional email? The worst time to send a professional email is when you're hungry, tired, and angry, right? You're going to say something or email something that you might regret. So I think it's incredibly important to check in with yourself to find out, you know, what, what's really going on in the moment. Um, you can always ask um, for an email, you can always send an email to ask for a meeting, um, maybe to ask for that face-to-face -face conversation uh, or a video conference or a phone call, um, knowing that the bulk of what you want to talk about and the bulk of the issue is going to happen um, in that other context. Um, you don't want to send something that you're going to regret. And hard and negative feedback is already hard and difficult to communicate. So don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot by sending it via email. 
Um, always give yourself enough time to write email. Um, it can be tempting to sit in front of your computer and try to um, compose something really quickly and check it off of your to-do list, but a strong professional email takes time. So make sure you give yourself enough time. If you're emailing a hiring manager, a human resources manager to ask about a job, don't do it as you're sitting outside um, waiting for um, school pickup. Um, it takes time. Uh, make sure that you give yourself enough space uh, to write the email uh, that makes you and paints you in the very best light. One thing that cannot be overstated is to make sure that you have a professional email address. If you're currently a job seeker and you don't have a professional email address, set one up today. Um, an example, cutie girl 14, it's not professional. And we don't want to be applying for jobs and positions with an unprofessional email address. Um, something like tconnors4 at gmail.com would be considered a lot more professional. And I think it's also important, oops, uh, it's also important to make sure that your name um, that you set up with your email address um, matches the name that you're submitting in your uh, materials. So if you are submitting for a job, for example, if I had uh, an email address that said that it needs to match Lauren Brown with my email address. Um, 76% of resumes with unprofessional email addresses are rejected by hiring managers right away. So this is not a mistake that should be um, made. Make sure that you have a professional email address to set yourself up for success and give yourself the best chance to get past that, uh, that initial screening of a hiring manager. Uh, I also want to talk about unlocking subject lines. This is really our invitation to open, and so we want to make sure that we put our very best foot forward. Um, every single email you send needs a subject line. Don't ever send an email without a subject line. Um, so I want you just to think um, very briefly about if you were to receive an email um and the email said in the subject line hi is that an invitation to open it may be but in the context of a professional email you want to make sure you spend time to get the right subject line because if they don't open your email it really doesn't matter you could have the best professional email but if somebody doesn't open it and get to read it it, it really doesn't matter. The average person who works in an office environment receives 121 emails per day. So you want to make sure that your uh, message is read. Hiring managers, HR managers, they are getting even more email than that. So make sure that you're sending them um, an email that they're going to click into. Um, the subject line is the title of your email. So we want to invite the person to open your email. It's a nice opportunity to give them an idea of what the email is about. I often write my subject lines after I'm done with my email. Um, you can do it personal preference. Um, maybe it's better for you to write the subject line and then write your email so you stay on topic but I like to write my subject line after I've composed the email. So I can write the strongest subject line possible that encapsulates what I've covered in my email. Um, here are some examples. March 3rd meeting notes, executive assistant application, Martin Smith. If I'm the hiring manager and I get that executive assistant application and I see Martin Smith's name, I know exactly who sent me the email and uh, what it's regarding. Um, some do's and don'ts on writing a strong subject line. We want to keep it short and sweet. We want to signal to what's inside. Um, there's lots of, you know, spam, clickbait, email marketing 
um, where they are going to um, write some, you know, maybe maybe provocative subject line to get you to open it. And what's inside the email has nothing to do with the subject line. That might be good for uh, spam. That might be good for email marketing, but that's not good for a professional context. Your email subject needs to signal what's inside your email. And make sure that you're consistent with capitalizing letters. There's two examples here. Neither one is better than the other but it needs to be consistent. So if you say coffee meeting fall internship and everything's capitalized, make sure that that's consistent across the email subject, just like the second one, the first letter is capitalized because it's the beginning, the rest are lowercase. It's gotta be consistent. Um, what you never want to do is to use all caps or too many. In a professional context, all capitals should be used never or almost never. Um, you never want to come across as screaming um, or demanding. Please don't be too general in a subject line email. Um, meeting, question mark, question. Um, those don't give the, the reader, the person receiving the email, any indication of what that um, email is, is about. Um, include the question in the subject line. If you are writing to an HR manager, the question, are you hiring? That's something that you would want to include in the body of your email. It shouldn't be your subject line. Um, and then this is important, to leave off a subject entirely. Um, you don't want to send an email that comes through with no subject. Um, you missed an opportunity to show what's inside your email and in, encourage your reader to, to open it. It also shows that this was something that was hurried um, that you didn't spend time um, working on. Um, so this is a little subject line practice that you can do for yourself um, at home. If you have a sheet of paper um, or want to mark, you know, take down some notes, please do that. Um, so here's a potential email. Good afternoon, Matthew. I found your poetry at the Southlands Farmers Market and immediately loved it. You are clearly a very talented artist. I'm collecting donations for the Community Center fundraiser. Would you be interested in donating two pieces for us to auction off? All proceeds from the fundraiser will go towards the Community Center's mission of providing a safe place for young people to get homework help. Please let me know if you're interested or if you know of other artists who would like to get involved. All the best, Alice Walkerson. So I want you to just jot down, maybe on a piece of paper, even just in your mind, what do you think would be a strong subject line for um, Alice's email? Some of the ones that I came up with were community center fundraiser interest, community center fundraiser request, pottery donation request. Um, make sure that you get to you're inviting Matthew to support your community center, but just cut to the chase. Um, you know, I think that there can be the temptation when we're asking people for things, when we're trying to get something from someone, um, even in a positive way, um, maybe that we want to couch it uh, in uh, pleasantries, but make sure to just come right out. Pottery donation request is, is my favorite of the three that I came up with because I think it gets right to the heart of the matter of what you are hoping for from Michael, or Matthew, pardon me. Um, let's move into talking about building the body of your email. Um, so we're gonna use the same um, example email from Alice to Matthew, um, and every professional email should have these three things, a greeting and introduction, a body, and a conclusion and signature. Again, sometimes in the interest of time, it can, we can forget about one of these options, one of these things, greeting and introduction, body, conclusion, and signature. Um, but the greeting needs to fit the audience. Um, so you should also be mindful of um, using the role of the person. For example, if I was going to email um, Representative Crow, I wouldn't send an email that said, hey, Jason, that would be too casual and it wouldn't 
um, project the professionalism that I was hoping to. Um, you don't need to be uh, over formal. Uh, we don't want to be, be too formal, um, but you should always be respectful and should depend on the role. Um, as you move into the body of the email, um, consider using line breaks and paragraphs to make things more clear. Um, and we want to use traditional writing skills, sentences, and punctuation. Make sure that you pay attention to the flow of your email um, and write out deadlines if you have them. Um, so you'll see here, um, you know, there's a nice introduction that says, I found your pottery. I'm, I'm impressed with you moving into the ask and then conclusion and signature. Um, so we're going to go a little bit deeper with greetings and introductions. Um, strong greetings, good morning, good afternoon, dear, hello. We don't want to keep our greetings um, informal. Things like, hey, um, what's up, things like that. Um, are not appropriate in professional email. And then an opening sentence or two. It was nice to run into you. I hope you are doing well. I think we have all been affected so much by the pandemic. Um, I've noticed that in my emails to folks, in my greetings, I hope that you're healthy. I hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. Um, just to show folks that you're thinking of them, that you want them to be doing well. Um, and then moving pretty quickly into the introduction and the purpose of the email. I'm emailing in regard to our conversation yesterday. Um, we want to get down to business and part of professional communication is that we leave room for pleasantries, but we also move to the heart of the matter pretty quickly. Um, we never want to be demanding um, or rude. We still use please, thank you, um, but we also don't want to go overboard and come across as saccharine or too sweet. Uh, moving into the body of the email, this is where the bulk of the information should be. Make sure that you ensure that the information is listed in a clear and concise manner. Um, if there's suggested meeting times that you are available, um, if there's something specific that you're asking your colleague um, to do, um, and consider adding other contact information. Um, if you're job seeking, um, it never hurts to clarify that they have your uh, phone number so they can get in touch with you quickly. Um, and be sure to use traditional writing skills. We always want to use complete sentences and correct punctuation. Again, write out those deadlines if you have them. Can you give me feedback on the presentation by Tuesday afternoon? Um, email can be particularly hard to read emotion um, or expectation. So it's important to be really specific and clear with folks when you need their help. Um, watch out for hedging. Um, so this is something that I think everyone can be guilty of. Um, Hedging is using qualifying phrases or words to soften our statements. Um, we do, of course, always want to be mindful of the tone, um, but you'll see here some common hedging phrases. I feel like it would be great if, just, basically. Um, we're going to do a little practice on rewriting hedging sentences and thinking about rewriting hedging sentences is going to help us get more to the point and have more direct and professional communication. I think it would be great if we discussed the project. You can think about how you might put that into your own words. I changed it to, we should discuss the project. We don't need to beat around the bush. We need to have a conversation and discuss the project. I feel like you would be a good reference for me. Would you please be a reference for me? You're asking the person, you need a good reference. Um, would you please be a reference for me? It's much more direct. You're clearly communicating what you need. 
basically, I am just looking for a professional connection in the tech industry. I'm looking for a professional connection in the tech industry. No need to put the word basically in there. Um, just cut it out altogether. No need to put the word just in there. Cut it out altogether. You're looking for a professional connection? Just come right out and say it. So hopefully you can see the fun GIF. What we wanna do always is just wrap it up. Wrap it up with your action steps. If you have suggested meeting times, if you're delegating tasks, and make sure that you always conclude with a signature. Don't send an email before you have put a signature in um, and consider adding your other contact information. Um, I've added here some email sign off ideas. Um, you of course can use your own and personalize it, but I think it's important to remember to not be too casual in this part. Thanks, thank you, best, take care, cheers, best wishes, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend. Avoid love XOXO. That would certainly not be professional in the uh, context of uh, a, a work environment or a job seeking environment. Um, a little dash in your name. Um, respectfully, you want to be respectful all the time. Um, sent from my iPhone. Some of these things are generated automatically by our phone. In professional email, um, take them off um, or nothing. Um, you know, sometimes in the interest of time, somebody shoots off an email and they don't put any sort of sign off or signature in there. Um, follow up. I think that this is really important. Um, make sure that you follow up um, 24 to 48 hours um, business hours for following up um, different uh, different companies can have different expectations for how quickly you respond to email so uh, take this advice with a grain of salt if you have an employer that expects you to follow up more uh, more quickly um, do know that um, but I think email is not like texting a friend. Um, you can reply quickly if you're able, but it's, you're not expected to respond within minutes, um, nor should you take three, four, five days to respond to someone's email. Um, you can check to see if you haven't received a, re a response in a reasonable time. People miss emails and it's okay to um, send something back a few days later. Um, but I think it's really important to remember email is not something that people sit and check um, all the time. And if you haven't received a response in a reasonable amount of time, um, it an hour is not a reasonable amount of time. It may be a few days or a week. Um, and respond to the email that you receive in a prompt manner. I think that this can also be something um, if you have a new job or a new job seeker, directly asking um, you know, your boss or your manager or your supervisor. You know, I like to respond to emails within 24 to 48 hours. What's your expectation of me? Um, I think that that's also uh, something that can be very helpful. Um, it is totally appropriate and okay to check in if you haven't received a response in a reasonable amount of time. Um, let's move to get out your magnifying glass, proofreading. This is incredibly important and sometimes you need to bring in friends, family, or other colleagues uh, to help proofread your work. So check for spelling errors. Um, you don't want to send out professional emails that have spelling errors. Particularly pay close attention to the name of the person the email is going to. Um, my name is Lauren and I receive lots of uh, emails from folks that says Laura. Sometimes it's simply an autocorrect issue, um, but make sure that you pay attention to uh, who the person 
is going to be receiving your email, that their name is spelled correctly, um, and that there are no other, that there are no spelling errors in your email. Um, ensure that you have complete sentences. Um, if your email is full of phrases or just simple bullet points, um, maybe you need to stop, take your time, um, and come back to the email when you can really get your thoughts down in full and complete sentences. Um, check attachments. I think that, um, I know that I've been guilty of this, is I send an email, I say, please see the attached documents, and then I forget to send an attachment. That's because I'm doing it too quickly and I'm moving in a hurry. Um, be sure to check attachments. Um, there are some services or some uh, technology solutions to that now. Um, Gmail will sometimes uh, prompt you to, uh, did you forget to attach something? There's also that feature on Outlook. So be sure to enable that feature if you have it as an option, but always proofread your email to make sure that you've attached the um, option or a, a put the attachment in. Um, this one is incredibly important. Only send emails that you would be okay if someone else saw this. If you are writing an email, you need to remember that people can forward your email, um, they can screenshot your email, they can share your email. Um, so it's very important to remember um, that email is not a private uh, communication tool. Um, and in theory, um, while this probably doesn't happen often, if you're emailing at work, your company um, can see your emails and are, are the owner uh, of your workplace communication. Um, so make sure that you're not emailing things that uh, wouldn't be okay if other people saw. Um, always check your tone before you send an email. This goes back to that being angry, hungry, tired, right? Tone in writing is the attitude um, that your writing conveys. It's about the words and the meaning behind your writing. Um, in speaking, when we're speaking to folks, we can often read their facial expressions, their body language, those nonverbal cues. We can understand the context in which things are said. We don't have this in email. Um, so consider the words that you are using. Here's two things that you might have to write in, an e in a work email or a professional email. You have to ship the item back before it will refund your money. That's true. You're not going to get your money back until the company receives the item. But there's a friendlier, kinder, more professional way to say this. Once we receive your item, we'll be happy to refund your money. Um, Remember that humor and sarcasm are hard to read. Um, and in general, don't use emojis in professional email. Um, it can be tempting to sometimes put in a smiley face um, and there's no, no, no need for it in professional communication. You can leave that to your personal communication um, with friends and family. Make sure you seek balance with tone. I think that this is important. Just like we said, humor and sarcasm can be hard to read. We never wanna to be too informal. Can you meet tomorrow? Hope so, and a ton of exclamation points. That's way too informal for professional communication. Um, using something like GR8 to say great um, with emojis. Um, while it certainly communicates what you want it to say, um, it's not done in a professional manner. And then call me. Uh, that's very short. It's not clear. We don't know what the person wants. Um, we would definitely, you know, I hate to say that this, I hate, I hate to admit it, it happens. Um, but we also never want to see swearing um, or derogatory language in email, things that sound aggressive. Um, you know, call me right now. There's a very, uh, a, a much more professional way to say this. We also don't want to be too formal. 
It is with great pleasure that I reach out to you and hope that this email finds you and your family in good health. Um, that's the other side of the spectrum. Um, you don't want to sound like a robot. We shall revisit the deadline in the future. Um, you don't need to use language that's unnatural to you um, either. Write in a way that captures your voice, who you are. Um, it would be really strange to interact with someone over email and then talk to them on the phone or over Zoom or face to face and find out that the way that they speak is completely and totally different. Um, so on your screen, you'll see uh, an email. Proofread this email and jot down some of the, the issues that you see with it. Morgan, it was so nice to meet you at the networking event on Thursday, hearing about your company. It would be awesome to chat with you about how you got into the role you have and learn more about the industry as a whole. Do you think that you would maybe possibly have just a little bit of time in the coming weeks to meet up? I'd be happy to swing by your offices or grab coffee, whatever is most convenient for you. Love, Max. So this is a little bit of an exaggeration, potentially, on some of the errors that we've just discussed. But I've highlighted here um, some of the issues that we see with this email. Um, Morgan, exclamation point. Uh, sounds like you're shouting Morgan's name. Um, something like, dear Morgan, hello Morgan, with a comma is going to be much, much nicer. Um, you need to spell out you. It was so nice to meet you. Um, we shouldn't use those informalities that come from texting in our emails. Um, no need here for the second exclamation point or any of the emojis. Um, the sentence, hearing about your company, is not a sentence. Um, make it into a complete sentence. Um, it was a pleasure to hear about your company. It was a pleasure to learn more about your role and your company. Um, I enjoyed learning about, hearing about your company. Um, the next section, do you think that you would maybe possibly have just a little bit of time in the coming weeks to meet up? There's a lot of qualifiers and hedging in there. Um, would maybe possibly um, get straight to the point. Um, let's meet up in the next couple of weeks. What are some times that work for you? Um, I'd be happy to swing by your offices. Um, happy is misspelled. And then love in a professional context is certainly too informal. So uh, this next slide, the sample email, is the email rewritten uh, into that professional uh, format. It was so nice to meet you. I loved hearing about what you do within your company. It would be great to chat about how you got into the role you have and learn more about the industry as a whole. Do you have a bit of time in the coming weeks to meet up? It's okay to hedge a little bit. You're not asking for hours of Morgan's time. Do you have a bit of time? I'd be happy to swing by your offices or grab coffee, whatever's most convenient for you. Best, Max. Morgan and Max had a great connection at the networking event, um, so it doesn't have to be too formal. Great. Um, so I think I see some folks who are adding some questions uh, to the chat or to the Q&A. Um, I did want to share this slide with Me Casa's services on here. Um, specifically, there's two that I want to highlight. Um, we have career coaching that is happens one on one. Um, it's via appointment, so you have to have an appointment to attend. Right now, we're offering that by phone or video conference. Um, we hope to add uh, some in-person, socially distanced um, coaching soon um, at, our, at our building in Southwest Denver. Um, but I think we would love to meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, any and all of you. Our career coach has a wide variety of employer contacts, um, no matter your skills or experience. And then I did want to highlight our financial services training. 
Um, we do this in a hybrid and online format. Um, I would be happy to answer, stay on and answer questions about any of these. <coughs> um, but Javier Martinez is the, is the person to call. His email address and his phone number are listed here. He can get you set up with a career coaching appointment. He can share more with you about the financial services training. Those are for um, roles in banks and credit unions, um, folks who have a background in customer service, uh, cash handling, retail. They're all great fits for jobs in banks and credit unions and banks and credit unions are hiring. Um, so it's a good industry to jump into right now. So uh, again, please make sure to note Javier's contact information there. Um, and I'm gonna start, I'll leave up the, the contact information slide um, and answer some questions here. Uh, so I have a question from Peg. Uh, I read that I should not use exclamation points in email. Um, is one exclamation point at the end of sentences wrong? What about at the end of several sentences in my email to convey my excitement? Um, Peg, I definitely think that it is okay to use exclamation points sparingly in emails. Um, it's definitely not something to go bonkers with. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I always reread my emails. And if I have more than two exclamation points, I know that I'm going a little, I'm going a little crazy. So um, I, my personal rule is no more than two. I am a person who gets excited. So I want to share that excitement. Um, but I think it's important to not uh, put multiple exclamation points and really limit uh, the number of times that we use them. That is for me something I often have to go back and edit because um, I'll use a lot of exclamation points when um, periods will do just fine. What else? Are there other questions, thoughts, ideas um, that folks have? Great. Um, it looks like we've got another question. Um, so, um, someone asks here that they have a new job um, and they have their employer makes all of the emails uh, the same way so for example like my email um, is uh, the, we do this at Mikasa my name's Lauren Brown so it's l brown at Mikasa resource center.org um, and this person uh, their name uh, makes a silly word um, so they're asking should they ask their employer uh, to change kind of the the format that they use um, because it follows company pattern um, or should they you know just just go along with the company norm um, so i uh, it looks like the person's name is sandy um, so i would say sandy um, it's really up to you i think that it's um you know on one hand uh it maybe will make your email address uh easy for folks to remember um, but I also would also say that if it's something that makes you uh, uncomfortable or uh, something that doesn't work, it's also would be okay to just check in with the company and, and ask them, hey, you know, I, this is my new email address. Are you guys okay with this? Um, because I think, you know, it's important for them to know um, where you're coming from. Um, but I would say if you're okay with it, um, I, if you're okay with it, I think, um, it doesn't say anything negative about you, um, since it's clearly not an email address that you chose. Um, now, if you took that, you know, kind of silly email address and took it to uh, Gmail, um, I, I would give you different advice. But I think since it's given to you by your company, I think that that's okay. Um, I am th I'm, I'm navigating through these um, the question and answer so I hope uh, if I if I skip something for someone um, please feel free to ask it again 
Um, I've got another question here that says, I just want to ask a quick question for my boss. Why do I have to do all the extra stuff like an intro, signature, etc.? cetera? Um, I think that it is important for us to realize as employees um, is that there are professional norms um, and there are ways in which we can dislike some professional norms, but there's also ways in which we just play by the rules of the game. I think, you know, uh, maybe in your personal life, the professional communication norms that we've talked about today would feel really funny. Um, and they're certainly not the way that you need to communicate with your friends and family. But at work, I think it is so important um, that we follow those professional norms um, and things like an intro, telling someone, hello, um, you know, I hope this email finds you well, I hope you're doing well. Um, those are to communicate care um, and appreciation, um, compassion, acknowledgement, uh, and those are all positive things with positive intent. Um, I also think, you know, uh, for example, at Mikasa, um, we have a email signature and the expectation um, from, you know, the highest level of our organization is that we include that email signature. Um, that for me in my personal life would be something that would feel really funny, um, but at work it's what I'm expected to do and it's one way in which I show that I'm a committed employee and a strong team player. Um, I think that at work, we, we do always want to uh, convey that, right? We wanna convey those positive things that we bring to our team and the positive things that we bring to our company. Um, so uh, another question uh, looks like from Cheryl, uh, it says in an intro email to a potential employer, do I ask for follow-up? Do I tell them that I will follow up or is that considered annoying? Um, Cheryl, I think that in an intro email to a potential employer, it is um, totally okay to ask for follow up. Um, I would recommend, you know, you don't want to come across as um, kind of overbearing or uh, too, you know, uh, demanding, but I think it's totally okay to ask questions like, you know, I'd love to learn more about your timeline for hiring, um, things like that. Getting more information is only going to help you be a stronger candidate. Um, the best candidates are ones that know the organization, who have learned about the organization, and can show the organization how they're going to fit in well. Um, so I think it's appropriate, um, you know, to, to gently ask for follow-up. Um, and I would say, you know, if you e send in an email about a job and you don't hear anything back from anyone, you don't get an acknowledgement that your application was received, um, it's totally appropriate to send another email um, and follow up and see where you are in the process, if there's any information that they need from you um, to ensure that, you know, that uh, application goes to, to the top. Lots of companies use applicant tracking systems um, and sometimes simple errors uh, can get you kicked out of in an applicant tracking system. So I think it's always a positive thing to follow up. Um, can I use fonts? Another person asked, can I use fonts and colors uh, in a professional email? The first thing that I would do is make sure um, that your uh, that your organization or your company doesn't have a style guide or a recommendation for that. So lots of organizations have fonts and colors that they prefer people to communicate in. Um, I know at our organization, we ask that people send emails in a certain font and in, uh, in black uh, in their initial email and then in the like default outlook color which is a sort of a dark blue. Um, so we don't have an option. Um, I think that it's important to not personalize too much using kind of fun fonts, cursive fonts, um, or fun colors. Um, that might feel like a fun way for you to express your personality, but it doesn't translate well, unfortunately, in professional email. And it's important for us to um, not undermine our awesome professionalism by using a font and color um, when should I use reply versus reply all in a big 
group email. Um, this question is a tough one. Um, this is something that I think get, can get people um, frustrated. Um, I personally think that it is really important um, to reply all when you're sharing information. Um, one of the things you don't want to do is hit reply only to the person and it's information that the entire group needed. I also think that when you write an email, it can be very helpful to give people direct instructions on whether you want them to reply or reply all. Oftentimes, uh, when I send an email to my team and I need a response on something, I will tell them, I need a response on this, please reply to only me. Um, and I will be very direct and very clear with them about what I need. So also feel free to do that, that when you are writing an email to a group and you don't need people to reply all, it's okay to tell them that. Um, I would also say um, it's going to depend sometimes on the culture of your company and your organization. There are some companies that do not want you to reply all, um, and that's something when you're a new employee, those are questions that are good to ask your supervisor. You know, tell me about the communication norms here at, you know, this company. You know, do you have any advice for me? as I learn to communicate in this new office culture. Um, I think it is important to use reply all sparingly. You don't wanna clog people's inboxes with information that they don't need, but you also wanna be thoughtful. I will often take people off an email um, and say, you know, I'm moving you off of this email because the information no longer applies. Um, and I think that that, uh, succinct and direct communication is important. Um, another person asked in the chat, is there a professional etiquette about forwarding emails? Um, that would be another one that I would uh, defer to some of the company culture or the organizational culture. I think the important thing to remember about the professional etiquette with forwarding emails is that um, the emails that you send are not private. Now you certainly, as the recipient of an email, you don't want to forward an email to gossip, to uh, perpetuate a negative office culture, um, or to get someone in trouble. Now you should always follow the procedures and protocols of the organization or company that you're in if you get an email that is inappropriate um, or that needs to be brought to someone above you's attention. Um, but I think, you know, if you are forwarding the email, make sure that you do a gut check with yourself about why. Um, I've got another question here. Uh, sometimes clients send me emails all night long with lots of questions. Should I respond to them in one big email in the morning or individually to each email and send them five or six emails in a row? I think that you should send them one email. Um, I think that you can model professional expectations for your clients um, and maybe do some, uh, some of the things that we've learned here today, um, teach back to them. Um, if they are thinking of questions for you all night long, um, maybe they can have a draft with questions for you and they send you one email. Um, but I think modeling that behavior back is great to say, I got your five emails. I've compiled all of the questions you have here in one. I'm going to go through and answer your questions, you know, and then if it's appropriate in the context, you know, I'm not sure the nature of your relationship. Um, but if it's appropriate, say, hey, I have an idea, um, you know, it would help me serve you more effectively to get one email with all your questions. What do you think about this? Um, of course, that, that may or may not be appropriate, but I think it's totally appropriate to send them one big email with all of their questions. That's gonna make their life easier too uh, to determine the response. Um, other questions? Uh, thoughts, 
ideas. Great. Well, that is that is everything that I have. Um, I have included my email address here. Um, as I mentioned, our company uh, sets it up this way, lbrown at mecasaresourcecenter.org. You are more than welcome to um, follow up with me here um, at the email address. Uh, you also are welcome to um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I do use LinkedIn pretty regularly. Um, and I would really invite, um, especially those folks uh, in the audience who either are looking to make a career change, um, are navigating um, unemployment or a loss of employment because of COVID. Mikasa is uh, here to help uh, no matter where you are in the Denver metro area, um, we want to serve you. So. Um, please, please feel free to reach out and uh, I'm, I really appreciate this time that we've got to have together today.